Game started. Apparently, I'm red. So I can look around. I can see who I am. Um, one thing, it's a little thing you may not have noticed, but I actually resized all the art. And that took way longer than I thought it would. It used to be these trees were really, really small. And I made everything about twice as... Well, I didn't. I made an artist do it. I made an artist make everything about twice as big. And so now the levels look a little cleaner and fresher. I'm actually really happy with it. I'm going to... Oh, by the way, notice you now get a little highlight that tells you where you can place your units when you place a unit. little red thing means you can't place the units there. Check these, uh, check these docks out. We actually have added in the ability to embark units. Actually, you can now bring one of your units over to uh, one of those docks, embark them, they'll get put on a ship, and you can now sail your unit around in the sea. New turn, I don't have a lot of guys. I need to get this guy down to go take some stuff. You'll notice now I've actually got a movement guide, an interactive movement guide in the game. So if I move there, it'll tell me, all right, you moved into a wood, that's as far as you can go, so all those other spots are places you can't go right now. But if you go this way, it tells you, aha, you can go all those places, and it kind of gives you a nice little readout so you can know exactly where you can and cannot go with your dudes. I will make him go there for now. Up here on the right-hand side, you can see we have command points, right? Right now, I'm only using two of my 16 potential command points. Uh, we have, this is how much gold you have versus your uh, cap. So I can get up to 29 gold right now. If I want to have a larger cap, I got to take some buildings like this in right there. You'll see down in the bottom right hand corner, these are the abilities that our units have. So my heavy horse can do a bunch of different stuff. I can click on them to see what they do. I can charge apparently. Um, I can, uh, I have a, a benefit versus beasts and I can subjugate something. And some of these are, uh, only show up in certain times. So, for instance, that thing that the, the flag bit that tells me I can take over a land only happens when I'm on land that I can take over, a building or a city or something. Um, so I'll take over that building or city. So, new thing we have, ships. I love ships. So notice I can't build my ship on a normal city. I have to build my ship on a dock. All right, so I've taken over that inn. You notice now that I've taken over the inn, I actually have a couple new abilities. So I can recover myself, I can heal at the inn if I would like. Um, I can also get some liquid courage at the inn if I would like. So here's a kind of fun thing you can do now. So I put my grenadiers here in this artillery tower. You'll notice he has his normal abilities, the grenadier abilities, but he's also got some spanking new abilities like this bombard. And look, I seem to be close enough that my grenadiers can bombard that guy in that tower or in that fort. And nobody can stop me. Notice I also have a uh, kick-ass uh, galleon, which I can now move around and do whatever I want to with. And one of the many things I can do with this galleon is uh, take him off the coast right there and bombard my neighbors with him. Oh, look, there's a ship, and I can shoot it. And we found it, our testing showed us that it was more fun to have ranged weapons that actually have some range to them. Uh, by the way, notice this weird bug that where that little smoke is right there. That's a uh, that's a bug. So the big white fog on the left is intentional. The crappy fog on the right is a bug. So the way it works is all of the ranged weapon attacks and all of the spells and special abilities resolve first. After that, movement happens and combat melee combat happens during the movement order. As for what order the abilities resolve in, visually they do it kind of sequentially so you can see what's going on, but they all happen simultaneous. So if I attack you and you attack me and is a ranged attack and yours does five points of damage and this one does 10 points of damage, we will both do damage to each other simultaneously. I may see one happen before the other one happens. If I killed you with my ranged attack, you'll still be able to do your ranged attack because it's on the same round. You'll just die afterwards. You'll notice, by the way, there's a how many units have I not moved counter up in the upper right-hand corner with the next unit so I can actually scroll through my unordered units if I want. So what order do units move in? So let's say you've got a, a unit with a movement of one or a unit with a movement of three. And, and keep in mind, for, for instance, uh, moving along a road gives you more movement. So this cannon here, he has a movement of one, right? But since he's walking down the road, he's actually going to get extra movement points he's going to be able to move two right what's going to happen is everyone in the game let's say there's a guy moving one there's a guy moving three a guy moving four 
everyone moves their first movement, then everyone moves their second movement, then everyone moves their third movement. And so if you only have one movement, if you're only moving one hex, you do that on the first move. If you're moving two hexes, you move the first hex on the first move, the second hex on the second move. So everybody moves, and then if you've got two moves, that guy moves, you've got a three moves, the next guy moves. But I, I do think the simultaneous turns really make the game, you know, very, very different in the way it plays out. So for instance, like this, right, I can kind of figure out, well, how much damage am I going to do, right? So he's going to do three points of damage, then I've got this guy over here who's going to do another two points of damage, so that's going to get me up to five points of damage, plus this attack. I brought way too many expensive people to this game, and I don't have enough money to pay for any of them. But when I picked my army, I did not look at the prices of these units carefully enough. How does capturing buildings work? You're trying to cap the cathedral early, it looks like being attacked, interrupted. Yes, you can be interrupted. You have to be uninterrupted the whole turn. We've been really, really anal in building this game about making sure every time we, we introduce a new rule or a new idea, we, we spend the, you know some quality time really thinking about um, are people going to understand this? You know, if we if we add this to the game, are people going to know how to do it? Does it make sense? Is it intuitive? Because that's where I think that's where Kalasia really died was people liked it once they got into it, but it took them so long to get into it. This is super simple. You want to shoot something, you tell it where to go. There is no other map. There is no other screen. In Kalasia, there was like, here's the map, and you're playing in the big strategic map, and every time you went to a battle, you went to the separate battle screen, and it showed you what happened in the battle screen. There's no battle screen here. Everything happens right here on the map. You don't get to concatenate armies. You don't get to, you know, that grenadier is always just that grenadier. He'll never be an army of grenadiers. He'll never be part of an army or anything like that. He's just a guy. He moves them around. So it's, it's very straightforward for me to understand what's going on in this game. And for me, that was the most critical part of what we're doing is making sure that nobody nobody had trouble understanding what they were doing when they picked this game up for the first time that was that was the heart of what we we're trying to do what are the current win convention or win conditions in the game so good question um you can actually i think we can pull down you can see right here uh victory points right now i have 92 player three has 129 so you can win by victory point, you can win by domination. That's what we've got right now. What we're going to be adding in the game later is other things. Uh, you know, protect this castle for X number of turns, etc. And we're going to be doing that for the single player missions so that we can have interesting single player missions. But there's been some talk about how can we integrate those into multiplayer. So maybe we can play a multiplayer where like one side has to guard this island for X number of turns or something like that. We're playing around with some ideas with there, you know, capture the flag or something like that, you know, take over four castles or some. So, uh, but yeah, playing to the death of all cities and all units is tedious. We won't do that. So there should be a VP win relatively soon. Um, and again, one of the things we have to do is figure out how to set VP and all that. There's a bunch of balancing involved there. But it'll be a lot like Kalasia. There'll be a VP win, uh, a total domination win. Uh, there'll also be a game takes X number of turns and whoever's got more VP at the end of X number of turns win. All of that will be available. Um, well, it looks like I did some farming. I feel bad. And I should feel bad losing like this. I still don't have enough money to even throw grenades. I think those grenades are way overpriced. One thing I think I've been thinking a lot about is the way that we ran those tournaments in Kalasia was fun. And I'd like to integrate that into the game where instead of having some sort of outside thing, I'd like to have in the game special events. One thing that we, we've been learning from uh, free-to-play games and, and other games outside of our genre a little bit is that having events and having things happen, uh, timed events, once you've shipped the game, seems to be something that really keeps people engaged, keeps people playing the game. So we want to be doing more of that, and I'd like to be building some support in the game for that kind of stuff. But that stuff comes a little bit later in the process. I'd like to build in a tournament system that's not external to the games. More of the social stuff that we were doing external to the game, I want to integrate into the game so that people feel they can open up the game and there's things happening in the game. Uh, that's really important to me. So I'm out. I've lost. I'm, I'm, it's over. That's it for me.